Welcome, Kirkwood School District, Sound and Light, sixth grade science. We're going to take a look today at uh, the properties of different kinds of waves. And when we talk about properties, we're talking about all the parts and how we can change them, manipulate them, make them do what we want them to do. Um, I'm Mr. McGee, and I'm excited to teach you more about waves. Okay, four very important pieces to what we're doing when we're talking about waves. The first part of this is learning some vocabulary. So let's take a look at this. The first part is called a wave. What is a wave? A wave is any disturbance that transfers energy from one place to the next. Energy is defined as the ability to do work, and work is basically force in distance. So energy will apply a force over a distance, and a wave transfers that energy, transfers that force over a distance. Medium is any material that a wave can travel through. So for example, you see there a picture of a piano. The piano makes a sound, and that sound wave travels through the air until it gets to you. Okay, we'll teach more about mediums here in a little bit. A mechanical wave is any wave that requires a medium through which to travel. All right, so you'd think that don't all waves require a medium? Well, there's actually one kind of wave, and that's light, that doesn't require a medium to travel through. So, for example, light from the sun gets to Earth through space, which we know space is a vacuum. There's nothing there. So light can travel through something and doesn't require a medium for which to travel. Why doesn't the medium move with the wave? Well, all mediums are made of particles, little itty bitty tiny pieces. When that wave enters the medium, it transfers energy. So you can imagine one particle bumping in to the next particle. The particles bump into each other and then pass that energy along. So you think about food being passed to the table. But instead of each person taking their little piece of the food, they just pass it along all the way around the table, like vegetables. No, I'm kidding. Eat your vegetables, kids. All right. So vibration, then, is how you can introduce energy into a medium. So when you take energy and introduce it into a medium, that causes the medium to vibrate, a back and forth, up and down kind of motion, that energy being put into the system. There's a great video here, we're not gonna watch the whole thing because as you can see it's pretty long, but there's great pieces here and what it does is it shows you how energy, this is just simply wind energy. So energy is up here hitting this bridge, okay? Now obviously this bridge isn't very well engineered, but you can easily see that that energy is being transferred to the bridge, causing the bridge to vibrate. Take a look at this. Kind of jump around here. Imagine being on that bridge, driving along, as moving as it is. Imagine being there. Imagine being in that car. That would be crazy. Crazy, crazy. So, there are two kinds of waves we're going to look at. The first kind of wave is called the transverse wave. A transverse wave moves a medium at right angles to the direction of the wave. Remember, right angle is like a 90 degree angle, a right angle, okay? So the wave is moving this way, okay, as the medium is moving up or down, up or down. So a right angle, okay? I always remember the T of the transverse makes a right angle right there in the T. So I like that as my reminder for transverse is a right, ang right angle, um, to the direction of the wave. So as you're looking here on the screen, you see the wave moves from left to right as you can see the wave goes up and down at the same time. Great picture here with the red and blue arrows. You can see that the wave is moving from the left side to the right side of my screen, okay? And I can see that that arrow is going up and down as well as left and right. We can see that the, the medium is moving at right angles, okay? The word transverse means across. So as the spring moves up and down, the energy of the wave moves across, okay? The transverse wave has many parts. We need to know these parts because that's part of the properties. The crest is the top. The trough is the bottom. This line that you see going right across the middle here is called the rest position, okay? So when this wave is at rest, it's right there in the middle. As you move this up and down, it creates a crest and a trough. The wavelength and amplitude we'll talk more about in a minute. 
So what we see here is a really cool video. We're gonna watch this whole video because this video is really cool. And what it does is it just simply shows you how you can take a pendulum and you can create different kinds of waves. And this is an example of a transverse wave. And you'll get to see it move and change and, and you'll see different crests and troughs and maybe even wavelengths and frequencies and amplitudes. So check it out, it's pretty amazing. He's got some bolts on a string. That's pretty cool. It's got an ultraviolet light to kind of make it glow and look cool. Look at the different lengths there. Okay? And what's going to happen here? Think about it. If you've got a shorter string or if you've got a longer string, how is that going to cause it to move back and forth? And then how are we going to get a wave out of this? What's the energy going in? And what's the energy kind of transferring? It's pretty cool when you see this go. I love black lights, so neat. Look how the wave changes. Pretty cool. All right, so the second kind is called the longitudinal wave. Wave that moves the medium parallel to the direction of the wave. So if you imagine, parallel means along the same lines here. So if I'm pushing a wave, that wave's gonna travel in that same direction. This causes the uh, medium to have areas that are compressed and also as well as areas that are rarefacted or rarefaction. So there's compression areas and rarefaction areas. And that rarefaction area is where sort of you have a spaced out area of the medium, more of a relaxed area of the medium. And that compression is that actual energy being transferred throughout that medium. So really cool longitudinal waves to draw. You can use lines, you can use slinkies, you can use dots. Any area where you're communicating that there's an area of compression where a medium gets pushed together and travels along. Now take a look at these arrows. We said that they were parallel. So as the direction of the wave moves from left to right, for example, here in the picture, it also moves the air molecules left to right, which is pretty cool. So some of these basic properties we're going to learn about are amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and speed. When we're looking at amplitude, we're looking at the distance from the rest position all the way up to the crest. Okay, so if we're looking, it could be from this resting line right here, all the way up to the top, or all the way down to the bottom. Changing that is called changing the amplitude. You may have heard of an amplifier. What do you think it does to a wave? Okay. What is the amplitude of a longitudinal wave? Well, when we're looking at the amplitude of a transverse wave, does a longitudinal wave also have an amplitude? And it does. Uh, it does because the areas of compression are noted here. So the more compressions you have, the more amplitude you have in a longitudinal wave. What about a wavelength? Well, the wavelength is the distance between two corresponding parts of a wave. So, whether it's the crest or the crest, or the trough or the trough, or whether it's the rest and the rest, as long as you have two corresponding parts, you can find the length of the wave, the wavelength. Does a longitudinal wave have a wavelength? Of course it does. It's the distance between the compression and the next compression. You could not do the area of rarefaction to rarefaction on this one, though, because it's hard to find the center of that, which could give you either a wrong answer or miscommunicate what you're trying to say. 
So it's the area of wavelength to wavelength, which is compression to compression. Frequency is a number of waves that pass a given point in a certain amount of time. So for example, if you're looking at a longitudinal wave, you see here that the wavelength of this is very short versus this. This is a high frequency wave. There are more waves that pass a given point in a certain amount of time. This one has less waves. You can see it only has three. So this is a lower frequency. You would know frequency very well because you hear things like pitch, okay? This would be a high pitch sound. This would be a low pitch sound, all right? Frequency is measured in a unit called hertz. So for example, we see here one, two waves going through here. This would have a frequency of two hertz or two hz. So we could easily look at a wave and calculate the frequency of it and communicate that in a number. Which wave property is directly related to energy? Well, that's amplitude. And you know this. You've done this before. If I take and have a pool of water and I sort of kind of hit it just a little bit, I'm going to get a low energy wave. But if I slap that energy down on that water, if I hit the water really hard, I'm going to get a much bigger wave coming out of it, which means that energy being added is going to change the height or the amplitude of that wave. Wavelength and frequency are related to one another, and this is a very important concept to get to understand. The first thing is that as wavelength increases, the frequency decreases, and vice versa. This is a great video, it's only 19 seconds, but it's a great video to show the relationship between wavelength and frequency. So you see here at the top of the screen, we have a wave that has sort of a longer wavelength, okay? That means less waves are going to go through this medium in a given amount of time, okay? I'm gonna start it over again. Here down on bottom, we have a high frequency wave. High frequency means that there are more waves in a given amount of time. Notice the difference. As the wavelength, the length of the wave gets bigger, the frequency goes down. There's less waves. That makes sense. I see that. Which wave properties are distances? Both amplitude and wavelength can actually be measured by a length. All right, so what we looked at today is we looked at the properties of waves. A lot of information in there. Good information moving us forward as we examine sound and light in the future.